Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. I just saw Vitor Belfort beat Evander Holifield, first round stoppage. But, and I was wrong on this fight, let's be up front. I was expecting a dominant Holifield performance. This fight is noteworthy for a few things. First, Looks to me like Evander Holifield is having problems with the surface of the canvas, right? He's slipping. He slips before the left hook misses that has him fall out the ring, right? Well, understand, this fight has a dynamic. I know it's going to be reported differently. What I want people to do is to look at at the film themselves rewind replay rewind replay what i believe you're gonna see is belford after evander slips the first time belford feels he's hurt evander maybe he did right because there's a body shot somewhere in there so belford who's a southpaw then comes forward and folks it's breathtaking because Belford fighting a former heavyweight champion, I don't care if he is 58, Belford in the first round is going after Evander Holifield, not a lot of lateral movement. He's not being subtle about it. He's crashing the pocket. So Holifield then throws what looks to be intended as a wicked left hook. In other words, folks, there's artillery in that first round. Holifield misses the punch. It takes him out of the ring. But that's a clear slip. There's no punch there. So the referee comes over. The ref looks at Holifield. Looks at him. Right? Wipes his gloves. The fight continues. Now here's where things are going to get controversial. Right? I don't think they've had the post-fight press conference yet, but let's just say Belfort comes in. He does land a good shot. Holifield's guarding the sides of his head. Belfort looks like he comes in with a good left hand that lands on Holifield's head. I'm not disputing it. But what I am going to dispute, in the comment section, you tell me your thoughts. Give me hell if you want to. But it looks to me like Holifield takes the punch. And then it looks like Holifield's left leg, right, bumps into Southpaw Belfort's right foot. It looks to me like Holifield trips over Belfort's foot. It looks like Holifield takes the punch. He's standing up. Then as he tries to move backward. He's surprised that his foot lands on Belfort's foot. So then Holifield goes down. I believe, and yes, there's sour grapes in my kitchen, but I believe it's a slip, folks. I believe this should have been called a slip. Well, put it this way. Holifield gets off the canvas, and the ref actually has some words with Holifield. I believe the ref tells Holifield, you're going to have to show me something. Now, here's where we get into different interpretations up to this point in the fight. The first time, it looks like Holifield slips. Is that a body shot? Which fight did you see? A fight where Holifield's feet, his shoes, don't seem to be right for the surface. And I'll agree, there are other fights that took place in that ring where guys weren't slipping and sliding. But that first shot where Holifield looks like he slips a little bit, is that a slip or is that a body shot? Holifield, throwing and then falling out of the ring, is that bad shoes or is that old age? Holifield then continuing on, getting hit with a shot up top that we've seen Holifield take much harder than. He gets hit with a shot up top. Folks, 
Is it a delayed reaction that has Holofield hit the canvas? Or is it, and I want you to look at the feet, is it Holofield tripping over Belford's foot? I'm not accusing Belford of being Chuck Webner. I'm not saying Belford is trying to trip him. No, Belford's trying to win. Belford is coming after Holofield. Make no mistake about that. But I thought the knockdown was Holofield, fresh off of falling out the ring, you know, on a slip. I thought the knockdown was a, a slip. So then Holofield gets up. The ref does say to him something like, you got to show me something. Then Belford's aggressive. That's why he wins the fight. Belford then goes after Holofield. And Holofield looks like he's covering up. I did not get the feeling that Holofield was hurt. Now I know some of you saw a different fight. A 58-year-old get hit with a left uppercut, hit the canvas, get off the canvas, whatever the ref said to him, Holofield too far gone, I'm sure to some of you, to defend himself. Folks, I thought the stoppage is premature Hollifield is covering up. Hollifield is aware of where he is. You know that because the minute the ref stops the fight, Hollifield turns away in disgust and walks over to his corner. He's not staggering. He doesn't look relieved. He looks like he never got started. Right, so... Boxing now is going to have an acute problem. It's an acute problem. While many of you are bemoaning the fact that a 58-year-old was allowed an opportunity to fight and Holofield turns 59 next month, what do you do with Belfort? Folks, Mike Tyson made a lot of money fighting Roy Jones. Are you telling me that if Belford fought Mike Tyson, that that fight is not going to get a million pay-per-view buys? I mean, how is this Holofield fight going to play out? Aren't you, for the next 48 hours, going to get hit with a deluge of articles talking about Holofield getting blown out by an MMA guy? Isn't this a new level, too? We've gone from Conor McGregor lasting some rounds against Mayweather, but tiring, to now having Anderson Silva beat Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. And now you have Victor Belfort, folks. This is a different fight than the others. You have Victor Belfort on his front foot, very little lateral movement trying to crash the pocket and crashing the pocket on Evander Holofield in the first round. So I'm just telling you right now, there has to be a buzz. You're wondering how far can Belford take this? Right? Who does Belford fight next? Oscar De La Hoya, who he was originally scheduled to fight. And folks, the way Belford comes after Holofield, Right, I believe even casual fight fans know that first round of Belford against De La Hoya, right, whose last fight was at welterweight, right, Belford just took out a heavyweight, is going to be worth the price of admission. Belford against Mike Tyson, I'm just telling you. I saw no fear from Belford. Belford sees ha see, Belford after, I believe, Holofield slips. Belford is up on it. Then Holofield falls out the ring. I believe Belford thought, this guy's disoriented. I believe Belford believes that the first slip was caused by a left hand to the body. Look at the film. Right? I believe it's a slip. It's open to interpretation. Holofield falls out the ring. It's clear when Holofield gets back in the ring, Belford has no fear whatsoever. No lateral movement. Right? He just crashes the pocket onto Vanda Holofield. 
Then when Hollowfield gets off the canvas, right, and it's a delayed reaction. Hollowfield does get hit with a punch. But then you see Hollowfield looking like he's going to back away. Then he falls down. Right? Belford clearly thinks he's hurt, comes in, throws a lot of punches. The referee sees Hollowfield covering up. The former heavyweight champion is covering up in the first round against a guy with exactly one professional fight. And the ref waves it off. Let's talk about Hollowfield. I know many of you are going to say, oh, he should hang it up. I know that, right? I know 58 sounds like too much. 59 is going to sound even worse. But if you're Jake Paul right now, if you're Logan Paul right now, which script are you buying? That Hollifield had bad shoes, slipped a couple of times, hit the canvas, wasn't hurt, was covering up, is still dangerous. Right? By the way, Hollifield's defense is not that bad. Or are you buying a Hollifield is too old, he's washed up, wow, he'd be a great scalp on my resume. Understand, Hollifield wanted to fight Mike Tyson before people start saying, hey, Hollifield's too old, Understand, both guys are over 50. Does this performance lure Tyson in the ring against Hollifield? Right? Does Anderson Silva, who KO'd Tito Ortiz, and let me just say this, there was a weight clause in their contract. Ortiz is clearly weight drained. Right? But, Silva has won two matches. Silva has a back foot game. Silva obviously has some power. Does Anderson Silva decide to push it against Evander Holyfield? Right, so let me just say, if you were upset that guys who weren't career boxers, guys who were MMA guys, were coming into the sport and getting purses, being on pay-per-view. Wow, you're about to be downright furious. Folks, Belford stands to make seven figures, I'm sure, his next match. Let's remember, Tyron Woodley made two million dollars fighting Jake Paul. You're telling me that if you hear Belford is in against Mike Tyson, or Roy Jones, let's remember, Jones got a tie with Tyson, at least according to Vinny Pazienza and the other judges. You're telling me you're not going to watch that fight. Let me also say, too, I know there are a host of people, a host of them, who are going to look at this fight and who are going to believe like I do that Holofield never gets knocked down legitimately in this fight, that it's a slip. Finally, you know, I saw the David Hay, Joe Fourier fight. Wow, Hay looked great. Now, don't get me wrong. Fourier's resume, uh, at least in the ring, he's a very successful businessman outside of the ring. I encourage everyone to look up Fourier's background. But in the ring, let's just say his record's inflated. The only more inflated record than Fourier had that I've seen recently was the guy who just fought um, Hergovic at heavyweight. Right? Fourier is fighting guys who barely have pulses before he fights David Hay. But he comes after Hay. Right? Now keep in mind, the two guys have sparred in the past. So there was a level of familiarity. Let me just say that David Hay, who doesn't get enough credit for his punching power. Folks, I don't care how cordial the guy sounds in interviews. He is one of the hardest punchers in the sport. With both hands. If you want to see Derek Chisora hit by a truck, look at Hayes' knockdown of Derek Chisora in a fight where Hay was tired and Chisora was aggressive. 
Well, here's David Hay against Fourier. David Hay is 40. And folks, he had the head movement working. He's on his back foot. He decides he's going to box a few rounds. He's outboxing Fourier. Um, showed some defense. Um, you know, you didn't see the big time punching power, but understand he's fighting his friend. Right? After the fight, David Hay said he wants to fight Tyson Fury. Let me just say this. And again, boxing has a problem. The old guys are back in the building. Tyson Fury has a problem with exactly the kind of agile, smaller, heavyweight, um, like David Hay, right? I believe Tyson Fury can beat Deontay Wilder in his sleep. I personally don't believe, and people here online know this, that I feel, you know, I personally don't believe that Anthony Joshua is competitive against Tyson Fury. I think Tyson Fury is just too agile, moves too well. But that wouldn't be the case against David Hay. Just like it wouldn't be the case against Alexander Usyk. Right? I don't believe we're that far away from one of these guys who's been out of the ring for a while. Suddenly showing up and suddenly fighting real fighters for real rankings. Right? Let me just say this, too, on uh, Victor Belfort. His resume right now has a first-round stoppage of Evander Holyfield. Right? If he were to, and I believe Tyson beats him, but if he were to beat Mike Tyson, are you sure, especially given the dearth of quality American heavyweights out there, Right, especially given the fact that most of us can't name too many contenders in the heavyweight division. <laughs> right? You know, I'm sure I mentioned Hergovic and people are like, who, who? Right? Are you sure fans aren't going to demand a fight between Belford and a ranked contender if Belford wins his next fight? Anyway, that's how I see it. Uh, let me just also say this, too, and I don't say it lightly. I know that Jake Paul is thinking about fighting Tommy Fury. I think Jake Paul wins that fight. Right? Isn't there going to come a time when we stop looking at these guys as celebrity boxers and we actually start looking at them as just boxers? Right? The one thing I know with certainty is Victor Belford did not come to this fight to outbox Evander Holyfield. He came looking for a stoppage, and he went for it in the first round. This, to me, looks like a new day for the sport. Again, if they announce a Victor Belford-Mike Tyson fight, I just don't see how that doesn't get a million pay-per-view buys. You know, you could imagine the promo. They show you Evander Holyfield hitting the canvas, right? Then they show you Mike Tyson, right? Are you going to say no to that fight? Is that fight less exciting than Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury 3? Let me hear from you in the comment section of this video. I was wrong. I lost my bet. Um, I even got a plus 200 on Holyfield. I was laughing. I was telling my girl, hey, you know, easiest money I've made in a long time. It turned out to be money I lost. So it goes. This is gambling. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. I think it was a slip. As I've said, there's sour grapes in my kitchen. You tell me what you saw in the comment section. Thanks for stopping by.